Okay, so we're back at Python Physics. I think this is lesson four. Uh, just to be clear, I am creating a series of videos to help people use Python in physics. Um, and so this could be for students that already understand some physics and want to use Python or for faculty that want to use Python, put Python in their class. And so I'm really starting from as basic of stuff as possible because I know it can get really complicated and you really have to practice these things. So. Uh, so far, I've did just you know, what is Python, how to use it, um, and then introductory graphs and kinematics in 1D. Uh, and I already showed the vector in the very first lesson, so we're going to use vectors now. But but this is the V part of vPython. So I'm using GlowScript uh, vPython, and, and this is in Trinket. Uh, and I want to make a model, a 3D model, of a ball tossed into the air and coming back down. And we can we can watch it. Okay, so I don't have any presentation to go with this, so let's just get to it. Let's start with the visual part of vPython. I'm going to make the simplest program you could possibly make. It looks like this. Sphere. Ready to run that? There you go. This is the power of vPython. Uh, this simple command makes a three-dimensional object, and it actually is 3D. I can rotate it around. I can zoom in. You can actually change the light source and all that other stuff um, because there's actually multiple light sources and, and the shininess of it. You could, more than you could possibly imagine, but we're not going to mess around with that. Uh, we wanted to choose that to make a ball that we throw into the air, and it's going to be a tennis ball. I'm in my mind. I'm imagining a tennis ball. So let's save this uh, toss ball for you, and I'll be sure to include the code down below uh, along with a link to the playlist for the rest of these videos, but this is yeah, lesson number four. Okay, so we've already done numerical models uh, for 1D motion. Uh, for 2D motion, it's the same thing. Okay, I guess we should talk about the sphere first. Uh, so let's do this, and then we'll model the motion. So I'm going to say ball equals sphere. So I, I can do this and give it a name. And the nice thing about that is that now I can do something like this. Print ball.pos. POS is a property of that object. It's the, the vector location of the center. So I can actually access that. And it's actually, I didn't tell, I didn't say what it was. So Python's like, well, I'm just going to put it at zero. Uh, and that, but I can print it out. Uh, again, back to the help menu. Here it is. I can go to choose 3D object, and which you can't see because I got it shifted, and go to sphere. And then here's all the parameters for that object. Uh, that you can you can set, okay. So I'm going to tell you the ones you really need. So let's not let's leave that right there. Now let's say what the position of the ball is. Let's say let's say it's at uh, vector. Spell it correctly. Uh, zero uh, point one zero. I don't know why I did that. And let's also give it a radius. Radius equals it's a tennis ball, so like. A radius of you know two centimeters maybe that might be a little small let's make it bigger than that say 0 0.05 meters and then the the units don't mean anything right it's whatever i pick but i want to be in meters and let's give it a color color equals color dot yellow and let's run it again now you'll notice that uh, a couple things are different in that it doesn't look small the other one actually had a radius of one meter, but the but Python's going to zoom in to take up as much space as you can. But this one isn't at the center; it wants to show the center, so that's why it's up a little bit like that. Okay, so there's my tennis ball, um, and it printed out the position. Let's make a ground. Okay, so let's say ground is another object that's built in, and it's, let's use box. I'm just going to run it, and it's not going to look very nice, but there's my box. You see it's a 3D box. And you say, where'd the ball go? The ball is in there, but this is a one by one by one box. So it's huge and the ball's in the inside and you can't see it. Uh, so let's make it more reasonable. Let's say the position is equal to the vector zero, zero, zero. Uh, the size is a vector of the Y coordinate. In, in this situation, Y is up and down, X is this way, and then Z is out of the, uh, the paper. So let's say the, the X axis is Let's give it a um, point zero point five zero point zero two zero point zero five and leave it. And I didn't give it a color, and it's going to use this white gray color. 
and I missed a parenthesis. Oh, wait. Yeah. There. Okay, that's pretty good. Oh, it's a little skinny. So let's put this at uh, 0.15. I'll make it a little bit weirder. 2.5. Okay. See? Okay, so now what I want to do is to, I want to throw the ball up. I want to give it an initial upward velocity. I want to model the motion as it goes up and comes back down. So we're going to need to use some vector stuff here. So the first thing I need is this gravitational field G. Okay, so I'm going to say G equals vector 0, negative 9.80. And, and this is really nice because now I can use vector kinematic equations. I don't have to worry about the y, the x, and the, I can just do it all together. The next thing I need, I need to give the ball a mass, not technically, but let's do it anyway, <clears throat> and initial velocity. So I'm going to say ball dot m. <coughs> this makes uh, m the property of the ball m. You could just say m. But if you have more than one object, it's hard to keep track of which m you're talking about, so it's better to associate that mass with that object. It's a tennis ball, so 0 0.05, 50 grams, kind of heavy, but whatever. Uh, and then I need the velocity. So ball.v equals uh, vector, let's do this, v0 equals 3.5 meters per second. So I can say uh, 0, v0, 0. So that's the initial velocity. Uh, now I can do this. T equals 0, dt equals 0 0.01. And I want to just, let's just let it run for one second, just because that's easier to do. So just like before in the previous one, the 1D can max, I can say while T is less than 1, let's say 1, 1. Um, now, what do I need to do? I need to update the velocity of the ball. So let's actually calculate the force on the ball. So F equals ball dot M times G. And it's going to do that every time, even though it's always the same, but I'm going to do that because it's a good habit to make. <clears throat> and then I could say this. A equals F. I really could say Let's just leave it as A. Equals F divided by ball dot M. Now, you may say that's dumb. You could say A is equal to G. True. But again, I'm trying to set up something for later. Good habits. Now, I can update the velocity. Ball dot V equals ball dot v plus a times dt. Now I can update the position. And here's the really cool part because I can actually update the variable position of the ball, which moves the actual ball. So ball dot pos is the r value. If you would think of the r position value of that ball, it is ball dot pos. So it's this ball dot pos plus ball dot v times dt and then update time. Now this is not going to run right. Save it. Run it. There it goes. You're like, wait, oh, I can't even see anything because one, your stupid face is in the way. I'm going to move that up here. Okay, let's run it again. It didn't animate. But it did. It just did it so fast, like a blink of an eye, and you couldn't even tell. Okay, so Python is really fast, and this is a really easy calculation. So how does it know what to do? We need to add in here a statement like this, rate. Rate tells Python, don't do more than 100 calculations a second. Why did I pick 100? Well, if I have a time step of 0 0.01, it would take 100 calculations to get one second. So this will do what, we, what I'd say real time. Now let's play it again. Now we're getting somewhere. So that went up and down one second. That's pretty cool. Except it went through the floor. Did you notice that? Let's do it for a half a second. Oh, it didn't do it long enough. Let's see, 7.5. Look at that. It went right through the floor. You know why? Because the floor is not real. I didn't tell it to do anything, so it's like, what? I don't know what to do. Uh, so what I could do is say while ball.pos.y is greater than or equal to ground.pos.y. 
dot y. And remember the dot y is the y component plus um, while it's greater than the, so that's the center to center. So then I need to add in the radius of the ball, ball dot radius plus ground, this is kind of complicated, ground dot size dot y. Let's see what that does. It just stopped. You like that? See, there it is. That's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Okay, let's do something else. I'm going to go up here to the ground, to the ball, and I'm going to say make trail equals true. So now it will leave a trail behind when it moves. And that's pretty cool. Now, what if I want to get some actual data out of this? I could also make a graph. You can make a graph and make a 3D thing. So let's do, let's make a graph up here. So let's, uh, there's a review. Uh, let's see how much time am I at? Okay, great. Graph or G1 equals graph. X title equals um, Y in meters. No, time. T in seconds. Y title equals uh, Y in meters. And then I can plot that. F1 equals G curve. Color equals color dot blue. And then down here, I can plot that. F1 dot plot T. Now the Y position of the ball is ball dot POS dot Y. Is that nice? That is nice. That was a trick question. I know the answer. That is nice. Okay. Now let's do something a little bit cooler. Up here, I'm going to do this. Theta equals 33 times pi divided by 180. V0 times vector cosine theta sine theta zero. What the heck did I just do? So now it still starts with an initial velocity of 3.5 meters per second, but if I think of that have, as having a vector component in both the x and the y direction, so the initial velocity is has some x component cosine theta and some y component sine theta, but all my equations still work. They're vector equations. This down here is a vector equation. Ball dot V is a vector. So it deals with the X, Y, and Z velocities all at the same time, which is super great. I don't need separate components for those. Uh, and the same thing for the position. It deals with X, Y, and Z. Let's run this and see what happens. I'm going to move. I know it's going to. Okay, so you see my floor, my ground wasn't quite big enough, but that's okay. Uh, let's change this to 73 degrees. Okay, so you can make the ground bigger if you wanted to. I don't really care that much, but I guess we should do it anyway. Uh, let's make that a little bit bigger. Let's say 2.5. Okay, so in this case, uh, it, it works fine. Yep, I'm pretty happy. Okay, now I want to do something else. I want to add an arrow representing the velocity on the ball. Okay, now there's an old way to do this, and there's a new way to do this. Let me check the new way, because I just can't remember. Work with 3D objects. Um, add an arrow. There was an, Attach an arrow or trail. See, make trail, make trail, attach trail, attach an arrow, ball, axis, scale. Okay, I think, I think this, I think I know what I'm doing. Okay, let's try this. I actually never done it this way. So if it's a disaster, it's a disaster. So let's make a velocity vector first. So I'm going to call this V scale equals one. Because if I, equals one. Because when I draw that arrow, it's an actual size. But the velocity is not a size. So I need this relationship between uh, the velocity scale and the distance scale, and that's what this is. This is v scale is equal to one. I'm just going to start with it equal to one. Uh, so now let's do this 
attach what was it attach arrow uh, ball ball dot v is that what it was scale and then scale let's try that and then give it a color so scale equals v scale and then the color let's make it cyan color equals color dot cyan and then I don't think I need to um, update that in in the loop I think it just does it let's just see what this if this works it may not work no it didn't work um, I may have to do this axis Oh, is that right? Velocity? Did it say this? Ball velocity? Oh, I never said. Oh, this is, this is, put this. That's not going to work. Okay, I didn't think that'd work. Okay, let's do it the old way. Okay. So I'm going to make an arrow. Let's call this V arrow. V arrow is an, a type of object called an arrow. Uh, this arrow has a couple of properties. One is a position, which is the start of the arrow. So I'm going to say the position is equal to ball.pos. I want to start at the ball. The axis is a vector from the start to the end of the arrow. So I'm going to say axis equals V scale times ball.v. And then I need to color. Color equals color dot cyan. Okay, so let's just start that. I'm going to show you what happens. It's not going to work. Okay, so, <laughs> so there's my, my arrow. You'll notice a couple things. One, it's ginormous uh, because it is 3.5 meters long, and that's not how big everything else is. So I need to decrease my scale. Let's call the scale, let's, let's try 0.1. Okay, that looks like a lot much better scale. But it didn't move, okay? So I need to move it now. So in the loop, once I move, change the velocity and change the position, I also need to change the position of the arrow and the uh, direction of the arrow. So I'm gonna say v arrow.pos equals ball.pos. Again, so the ball position moved, I need to move the arrow. Uh, and then I'm going to change the axis, v axis equals v scale times ball.v. So that will change that also. Let's see if it works. You can't see, because I'm a dummy, again. Huh. Oh, V axis, ah, that's stupid. V arrow dot axis. Nice. You like that? That's pretty good, I like that. So, okay. Um, so that's adding an arrow. Um, I think that's good for it now. I mean, we're, so why would you want to make a 3D animation of this? One, it's, it's artistic. Uh, I like the art of it. Uh, two, there's a lot of times when you can get some visuals here that you wouldn't normally see, uh, and that makes it really, really nice too. Uh, there's a whole bunch of properties you can change. You can change uh, things about this trail. You can change how often it puts a dot down. You can uh, change um, everything that you could think. How many are kept? You then have to keep them all. Uh, but I'm just trying to give you a basic idea of how you can do these visual things. Uh, and then we'll do some more things. I'm not sure what I'm going to do next, but it's going to be awesome. That's lesson four. So again, there, this is in a playlist. If you want to see the rest of the videos, go check it out. And I will give you the code for this down below.